गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू डिस्कस वन ऑफ द वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट पार्ट ऑफ द नैनो मेटेरियल दैट इज फिजिकल एंड केमिकल प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ नैनो मेटेरियल यू ऑल नो दैट इन रिसेंट ईयर्स nano materials have been used for various applications in the area of chemistry physics biomedicine optoelectronics and other engineering field and size and shape of this nano materials play very significant role for this application it is a very big chapter the complete information about this various physical and chemical properties but in this particular lecture i will only concentrate on the optical properties now before i start my discussion i must tell you some of the important books and research papers which i have referred for the preparation of this lecture so it is up to you you can also refer all these books for the details information of the properties say for example for optical properties of the metallic nanoparticle you can refer this book and understanding nano science and nanotechnology the nano essential by t prajeep is a very famous scientist in the area of nuclear uh, the nanomaterials iit chennai then you can also refer the textbook of nano science and nanotechnology by prajeep and also the optical properties of nanoparticle system in addition to this book there are large number of research papers on the various aspects of nano materials and you all are aware of the this year nobel prize on this quantum dots so therefore there are plenty of literature available in the literature research paper published by professor louis brass as well as mongi bevandi and ekimov regarding this quantum dots so i have referred this review article the quantum mechanic of larger semiconductor cluster the quantum dots so i request all the students they must at least read some of the old and recent articles of these novel laureates so you will have a very clear cut idea about the quantum dots and of course the nano material and i have also referred this research paper which is published in acs nano that is the nano crystal quantum dots from discovery to modern development and you will be happy to know that this nobel laureate professor louis brass was the first scientist in the world to prove size dependent quantum effect in particles because most of the property is based on the size and shape of that type of quantum dots and also i have referred this book chapter and a very simple language they have written this whole concept of the quantum confinement effect of 2d nanomaterials because we are here we will dealing with the zero dimensional nanoparticles that is the quantum dot but you must know the two dimensional nanomaterial as well as the one dimensional nanomaterials so i have referred this uh, edited volume the quantum dots fundamental and applications and under this cover this article is very important to understand the 
quantum confinement. Now, I have also referred this research article published in Journal of Physical Chemistry B, the optical properties of metal nanoparticles, the influence of the size, shape and of course the dielectric medium. As I told you that today I will concentrate only on this optical properties of the nanomaterials and what I mean to say that I will also discuss the optical properties of the nanomaterials particularly some metallic nanoparticles as well as I also discuss the optical properties of the semiconductor nanocrystal or which is sometimes called is a quantum dots and it is up to you to read some of the very interesting research articles of this nanomaterials. There are large number of research papers are available. So I am just giving you some of the research papers. Now, because it is a very big chapter, but actually the size dependent properties of the nanomaterials can be divided into many type of properties. You all know that in my first lecture, I have already discussed about the one of the reason the size surface area to volume ratio or sometimes it is called the surface to volume ratio. As we decrease the size of the nanoparticle, this ratio is increased. So, we have to also learn the mechanical properties as well as the magnetic properties also very important, thermal properties also very important, melting points and the lattice constant, electrical properties. But as I already discussed with you that in the short presentation, I will concentrate only on the optical properties. Now, whatever the properties, there are some common reason for that. Why this such type of the nanomaterials or the nanoparticles exhibit a unique and novel type of the property? What is the reason for that? Now, there are many reasons. But these four reasons are very important. Number one is that large fraction of surface atoms on that particular particle. And therefore, if we compare with the normal energy and the surface energy of a nanomaterial, it is a large surface energy. And of course, I will discuss about the, you must heard about the electrons and particle in a box in the quantum mechanics. But here for nanomaterials also, we will study the quantum confinement, the confinement of the electrons and electrons hold in this very small volume. And this of course reduce imperfections, the crystal structure, these are also actually actual origin of that nanomaterials. Now, before I start this optical properties, I must give you some very common example. You are all aware of the normal color of the gold as well as the normal color of the silver and other things. So, when this is a bulk, you can call it a bulk material. So, this color is, you see, is a very clear cut yellow color you have seen. And it is very inert, you all know. Gold very inert. But when I prepare gold or silver nanoparticle, you will see that silver nanoparticle, the color is yellow. Why? Number two, the color of this gold nanoparticle is purple or wine red like that. So, what is the reason for that? So, in these different types of the color. So, that is comes under this optical properties. I will, I will explain why such type of things in occur. Second thing is that this nanoparticles are very, very active. 
very very reactive so we can use for sensor and other optoelectronic properties and other things now basically whenever you are talking about the optical properties like simple what is the spectroscopy it is very simple that the interaction of metal and the electromagnetic radiation here is also same thing but i request all my student that because you are all aware of this very important interaction between the electromagnetic radiation and the matter or the materials but now the there is certain important development sometimes it is called the hybrid type of the development basic knowledge of the light matter interaction molecular quantum electrodynamics it is a really challenging field so please refer this very new article theory and modeling of light matter interaction in chemistry you are all aware of this very old theory of light scattering proposed by the mu in the year of 1908 1908 a scattering theory of the scattering but now you know that there are some very modern theory and uh, that is called one is called the plasmon theory i will explain this thing plasmon theory particularly today i will explain on this plasmon theory as well as the or sometimes it's called the plasmon chemistry and polariton chemistry this is the new concept not new concept but for this msc student so plasmon chemistry or plasmon resonance another is this polariton chemistry and this is published in physical chemistry chemical physics 2023 very new article because optical properties means the interaction of this electromagnetic wave with that materials now let me first give some of the very simple example why we talk about the size and shape control properties here i am showing one of the example of silver nanoparticles basically nanoparticles generally 1 to 100 nanometer so if the particle size is 10 nanometer we are getting a linear localized surface plasmon resonance or absorbance lambda max around 400 but as we increase the size of the nano particles of the silver what is the your observation that there is a shifting of this absorption peak and if you see this 100 nanometer so there is a you see from 4 to 500 so that means the optical properties is also depend on the size and similarly if the particle is like triangle equilateral triangle or spherical then of course there also change and i have taken from literature and this is a very common example any student can prepare silver nitrate in his or her laboratory and they can see the effect of the size okay similar this is the most common example is the sil silver then similarly another example again i am taking from this literature published in this nano scale research later thermal diffusivity measurement of spherical gold nanofluids of different size and the concentration 
so basically the gold color you know that it is like, just like a purple red or wine red and we are getting in 520 like that if the size is 55 nanometer so as soon as we increase the size of that nanoparticle so you are getting see the lambda max is also shifting so this is also same thing in first case i have so you the silver now it is the gold similarly in our department as you know that in chemistry department most of the professors are working on this different types of nanomaterials synthesis of the not only they are synthesize the nanoparticle as well as now they are synthesis nano rods as well as the nano cluster i am taking this transparency from my student who is a faculty member of this department professor manmohan lal satnami now see first is the first case is the nano particle and here there is a clear cut of course i am taking the gold type of thing okay but where when we have prepared the nano rod nano rod of course the size is different and you see the if the color is right red or purple red here the color is uh, different and we are getting two peak because if, if we are talking about the later on i'll explain this what is coherent oscillation polarization i will explain but you just understand you just see that there are two peak one peak is because the size of this it is like that it is long it it is nano rod this is of course electron cloud and other things so there are two possibilities one is longitudinal electron oscillation another is the transverse type of the oscillation so therefore we are getting two types of peak similarly if we have prepared some nano cluster large number of atoms are combined so here we are getting a different type of fluorescence type of the property so what does it mean depending upon the size and shape of the nano materials the optical properties are also changing and one of the most important uh, properties of that nano material that some that is called the tailor made properties that means as per our requirement we can tune we can tune the optical properties similarly we have also published some paper in applied nanomaterials american chemical society with the help of sam and tame we can we can also the measure the size of the particles everything that can be measured and you see that there are two type of one and two these are all gold nano rods example of the gold nano rods prepared in our department and uh, now as i told you that i will concentrate only on the nano material as well as the some quantum dots that is called the semiconductor nano particles in our lab again dr manmohan lal satnami and his students they have prepared large number of different types of cad cadmium tellurium quantum dots and studied their different optical properties we have seen different types of properties these is different types of color and uh, when we prepare the absorption spectra we can measure the absorption you see that it depends upon the band gap and other things it is normalized fluorescence spectra and this is the synthesis method by which that cadmium tellurium glutathione cap quantum dots can be prepared today i will not discuss the application of all such type of semiconductor nano crystals and we have already published this paper but what i want to tell my student that with these example you will have a clear cut idea about that depending upon the again and again i am saying same thing depending upon the size shape the optical properties will change now i will come to the actual point what is the basic reason for such type of optical properties i am coming to the 
very fundamental points of this optical properties now there are basically two important concepts which are responsible for such type of unique optical properties and you all aware of this surface plasmon resonance but i think you are not aware of that localized surface plasmon resonance that is called the lspr basically first i will explain the metallic nanoparticles on the basis of this localized surface plasmon resonance the origin of localized surface plasmon resonance and again for semiconductor nanoparticles i will discuss the quantum confinement and that is you all know that increase energy level spacing and uh, you know that in normal type of bulk material is a continuous spectrum but here there is a discrete energy level so just you always remember this two important point localized surface plasmon resonance so you must ask me sir what is actually plasmon you know about the photon quantum of the light similarly if you ask me what is plasmon you know about the plasma solid liquid gas and then fourth state of that is the plasma but plasmon it is a one type of oscillating electrons oscillating collective oscillation of the electrons on that surface i will come to that picture that what is actually why it is called the localized surface plasmon resonance now sometimes these are all very similar type of the things quantum confinement quantum coherence surface and interface effects i will i will explain one by one this first i will discuss first the localized surface plasmon resonance basically here i am concerned about the novel metals like silver gold and platinum and because if i prepared different types of silver gold and platinum nanomaterials and they play a very important role in diverse applications in the field of physics chemistry biology medical science optoelectronics engineering and material science because now as i told you that this is nothing but the interaction of this electromagnetic radiation with that particular nano materials but the difference is that here if we are taking about the visible reason you know that the wavelength is 400 to around 800 nanometer whereas the size of nano particle here we are taking say for example 10 nanometer maybe 100 nanometer so it is less very less as compared to that electromagnetic radiation part so there is a possibility that there is a possibility of the absorption there is a possibility of the scattering or you can call it is a coherent oscillation of that free electrons available in the conduction band because if i talking about the you all know regarding the valence band and the conduction band and ultimately we are getting a resonance peak like that this is the first point so if you see this picture so you can understand the complete linear localized surface l s p r now because the size is suppose very less uh, suppose this is 20 nanometer whereas this electromagnetic radiation is 400 nanometer like that and there is a electron cloud so there must be some electrostatic attraction between this nucleus as well as the electron so when we just 
apply the electromagnetic radiation so there must be some some polarization and because that electron if i talk about this valence bond and conduction band so that free electron they will easily fluctuate under this electric field and so a coherent oscillation means the collective oscillations and this is a this is a polarization effect it is a polarization effect and of course they show a specific frequency that type of frequency is called the plasma frequency so what is the simple definition of the plasma means this surface electron that is a swinging movement of that electrons under the electromagnetic radiation that is called the plasma now there is a theory is very old theory but i will discuss this theory that whether there is a scattering or there is a absorption of course it is also depends upon the size of the nanoparticle if the nanoparticle size is suppose suppose 200 nanometer maybe there is a possibility of the scattering so we can also consider because when we synthesize the nanoparticle there is a possibility of different types of different size of the nanoparticle so yes it is possible that we must consider the absorption as well as the scattering so there is oscillation so fluctuation so this electron cloud this side and this and then there is a electrostatic attraction is also there coulombic force is also there so that will restore the position like that so this is also this is the dipolar excitation is like that so such type of things is happen not propagating so these are the same thing uh, so electromagnetic radiation induces polarization here is also maybe plus 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 plus, plus. so electron electron cloud like that the same picture is there so now we can understand this is what is the uh, and it is is confined in this particular very small volume so therefore it is called the localized surface plasma and that based on this electron is the conduction band so the wavelength of the light is much greater than the nanoparticle as i told you then this collective excitation or oscillation of the electron charges are called localized surface plasma now as i told you just few minutes ago that depending upon the size if the size is very small there is a, of course the absorption otherwise you know that there may be some scattering 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 process so there is a term proposed by the scientist mai mai so that is called the extinction that extinction is the sum of scattering as well as the absorption and there are certain theories i will not explain that complete theories of this theory and therefore it is called plasmonic nanoparticle it is called the plasmonic nanomaterials like that because when the wavelength of the incident light it is just matched with that wavelength of that incident light matches the oscillation frequency the particle can strongly absorb or scatter and giving a strongly color type of the particle or the clear type of the particle and absorbance wavelength lambda max wavelength so it will such type of thing. so when there must be some matching of that wavelength of the incident light and the oscillation frequency so it is our hand that 
as per our requirement as per the property we can tune we can tune the size so the peak resonance wavelength can be shifted across the visible into the infrared region to the spectrum along so it depends upon the size and shape now as i just told you that there is a very important theory which is proposed long back g my still we are following this theory he proposed this theory long back 1908 and this is the actual reason for this oscillation and that time he has taken he thought that is a spherical type of the particle metal particle and is highly dependent on size and shape it dependent on the refractive index dielectric medium medium and other things so for triangle we are getting different type or sphere or rods cubes i get that actually but still actually large number of theories have been proposed for the modification of this my theory and but still we follow the basic reason for such type of oscillation collective oscillation is based on this theory so you must um, understand this theory i am not giving the details formula of that theory but if you want to learn much about this theory you can get all the information about this type of theory and it is they derived this theory by solving the maxwell equation my derived this theory on the basis of this maxwell equations so i have already discussed this things so it depends upon the size of that nano particles according to the my theory if the size is large so there is a scattering if this light is small the nano particle size so there is a absorption and the fraction of the absorbed radiation added to the scattered one is called the extinction coefficient and depends on the frequency so this oscillation frequency is depend upon many factors you know that if we consider the silver or gold or palladium or palladium or platinum so there is a different types of electrons and other things so it depends upon the density of electrons it also depend the effective electron mass as well as the shape and size of the charge distribution and so this collective oscillation is called dipole plasmon resonance because there are you know that this type of things electron electron and electron so this displacement of the electron in second case we have seen like that some of this is the electron cloud so how this electron cloud is displaced by this electromagnetic radiation so c of electrons c of electrons so when the electron cloud is displaced relative to the positively charged lattice that means this nucleus the coulomb attraction between the electrons and the nucleus and then they produce a restoring force and ultimately we are getting a, as i told you many times that resonance frequency and by monitoring this resonance frequency we can do all such type of things so this is all about this uh, lspr that basically for the metal nanoparticle okay now i am coming to that semiconductor quantum dots and most important part which is also very simple that is called the 
that is called the this diagram is very common and you will get this diagram in everywhere that is i am talking about this the quantum confinement because as we decrease the size of that materials quantum dots so there is a blue shift and this electron an electron hole i will explain that things there is a concept of the exciton i will come to that point first point you just understand normal cases metal insulator and other things so there are two band one is valence band and another is the conduction band so there is a movement of excitation of the electron from valence band to the conduction band and of course this when we decrease the size of that and you know, materials quantum dot you see that the band gap is also increases like that you can call it the e also very important band gap i right, 2.1 electron volt it depends upon the types of the nanomaterials and in normal cases when there is a metal and we convert it into the quantum dots so the in place of it is a, there is a continuous energy level but here there is a discrete energy level this is first example if we you can also discuss in terms of highest unoccupied molecular orbital humo and lumo also you can also discuss on the basis of these things but one important thing is that when it this electron suppose it excited to this conduction band so it leave a hole hole under the electron so this is very very important the hole and electron pair i'll come to that point that is from the exciton that is hole hole and electron pair which is very important hole and exciton hole and electron pair pair so that plays a very significant role because you know that if i consider the normal case there is a concept that is called the bohr radius you all know this thing so oh, this is nucleus and all the electrons are moving like that you know about the bohr radius so in this semiconductor nanoparticles we have to calculate the exciton bohr radius i will come to that point that what is actually hole and electron pair but one thing is very clear that band gap energy energy or energy band gap as we decrease the size of the nanoparticle the there is a blue shift but there is a band gap energy is increasing so there are two reason like surface ls pr is different now i am coming the quantum confinement effect so the quantum confinement effect is based on two important factor because both hole and electrons are confined in a very small volume which shows a discrete energy how it is converted into discrete energy level when the size of that particular material is equal to normal de broglie wavelength the wavelength of that particular 
small quantum dot when it is equal to de broglie wavelength then of course from continuous to there is a discrete energy level discrete energy level not continuous i am talking about the zero dimensional quantum dots all all directions so what is the condition that we have to measure the bohr radius for electron bohr radius for hole and bohr radius for exciter and the actual radius and the length of this exciton bore radius plays a very significant role sometimes the exciton bore radius and normal radius is equal there is a medium confinement but sometimes what happens the bore exciton radius bore exciton radius is very very low as compared to that radius then of course that is called the very strong confinement effect now just you see very carefully the actual actual picture of this excitons and there is a large number of excitons like that exciton exciton telling is you just take this telling exciton so first is that when an electron from the valence band of a quantum dot is promoted to higher energy level the conduction band exciton is formed ti is you know exciton exciton x exciton okay so naturally it is positively charged when it just releases the electron so naturally there must be how it, it is a pair always so it is a called a whole electron pair the whole electron pair and the bond responsible for this is called the electrostatic coulombic force sometimes it is called the quasi electric particle quasi particle but of course it is neutral type of the thing so excitons have average physical distance between the electron and hole and this distance is called exciton bohr radius which is very important exciton bohr radius is very important and this excitons is n are confined in all three spatial dimension so there are two reason one is we are talking about the discrete energy level and if we decrease the size there is a blue shift you know the color also change and second point is that the role of exciton bohr radius the size it may be less than normal radius it may be equal to normal radius it may be greater than that radius and depending upon this bohr exciton radius radius the properties may change strong confinement weak confinement or medium confinement that is the Think and it is sometimes it's called the neutral quasi particle. So the last picture again I am just showing you that I have taken from this. This diagram is also common and you get in various type of. So these are all right like that. Discrete energy level and you can go A and E. 
you see a can is a schematic diagram schematic diagram this is a schematic schematic diagram so it again it is a balance band and conduction band you see now yes you can also calculate this is actually the formula of this you know all about this bohr radius for hydrogen atom we can calculate 0.529 like that and this is the dielectric constant which is very important medium of that quantum dots are like that so we can very easily calculate the bore radius exciton this is actually exciton bore radius exciton bore radius this formula this is whole bore radius this is electron bore radius why i am just showing all these things because this magnitude is very important in order to know the status of that quantum confinement you see here it is a, of course it is a pictorial schematic diagram what i want to say is that when you decrease the size the energy band gap is increase like that and that the distance between hole and electron of course is a pair it is also gradually changing so this means if the size is very very small so that is strong quantum confinement that both electrons and hole is confined in a particular area so this is so, so i have discussed first for metallic nanoparticles and secondly i have discussed about the quantum confinement so in summary what i can say that as nanoparticle size increases the absorbed frequency decrease exhibiting a red shift you have seen like that if the particle size is high and that refraction index or the dielectric constant is a, plays a very important role and a higher absorption constant induces a decrease in the plasmonic frequency with an increasing rate shift and there are three types of strong medium and weak confinement so exciton bore radius is greater than quantum dot size so what is the reason for strong confinement when the exciton bore radius is very very less than that the radius of that quantum dot material so my dear students very i have given a very simple and elementary idea about the optical properties of that quantum dots as well as some metallic nanoparticles and as i discussed in my preliminary part that you have to learn all these properties not only only the optical properties mechanical properties melting point lattice energy electrical properties magnetic properties so many things so it is a very simple elementary idea about this optical properties but if you want to go in details information details theories of that optical properties so you have to read large number of good research paper of louis brass or bavendi as well as the other books are also available my theory and other things but basic concept is that there is a interaction between the electromagnetic radiation or electric field with that quantum dots or the nanomaterials and then of course we confirm that all the properties optical properties depends upon the size and shape thank you very much